Welcome back to the White Whale 2.0 Rebuild. Here we are on week 10, the final week, where we finished the truck and loaded up on the trailer. We just have a million last minute items to get done this week, including light mounts, brakes, drive shafts, power steering, links, hand hard, drag link. We need to redo the links, reorder the drive shafts. Anyways, you'll see, stay tuned. this, I'm going to use a smaller tungsten. To start off, Alex and Ian are mounting the lights here. You see on the front winch tray, Alex has a tab he holds up while Ian TIG welds it on. Some great teamwork. Now that the lights are all mounted or ready to be mounted, the guys are gonna work on the pan hard, the drag link, and the leaks. So of course the first step is to roll that axle housing underneath so we can do the measurements and find out how our drag link and our pan hard is gonna look. Is that articulated? Uh, is that articulated or no? I don't know. future Jenna jumping into the past. So we did find out that those big 47 inch tires do rub on the coilovers. They do rub on the links when we fully articulate and that's without any wheel spacers or anything. So with all this measuring and everything, it just goes to show that until you get the tires on and you start flexing out on rocks, it's hard to say where everything's gonna live forever. I think usually in a long-term build, you'd have time to kind of take things off, re-weld them on and make things really work with the geometry. I think that's one of my favorite welds on the whole truck. It came out so pretty, like an art piece. And it's just a recovery point on the front. TMR did a great job on these. They hold the soft shackle perfectly. Yeah. No, that? let me try first. <laughs> Can I try or I'll film? <laughs> you ready? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it is. Woo! Prep your bolts. <laughs> Fucking grade nines, baby. The axle. That's what I was doing, it didn't work. Wow. Alex finished up the clutch linkage. It's all tacked to the frame all ready to go and clearanced. It just needs to be final welded here. And this is showing the steering coming together. We have our ram on, the steering tie rods installed. It's looking good, We're getting close. I think these are version one of our links. The guys had to recut them at least three times. I did lose count, but it was definitely more than twice. See, if I designed this bracket, I wouldn't have this stupid cutout for water drainage. I would just weld it the whole way and just let it fill with water. And here you see Ian mocking out the front shock mounts, their custom shock mount that he's building inside on the frame. See there? And it, it took a couple tries to line it up and everything, but we had to we wanted to cut the least amount out of the firewalls possible, the fender. I think they came out really nice. So that's why they're built like that, where it starts out at right height with them pointed way forward. It's the only way for them to do it like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looks like you might not even have to notch the frame. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. For the pan no. drag link. And there it is. Oh, the final the resting place of the front shocks. All one. final welded in with the bump stops. The coils all installed. Just keeps going. Looking good. Hey, it's me, future Jenna again. Just wanted to let you know that these shocks leak so bad. So we didn't find out until we after we left the shop, but they all leak at the top hat, both sides, and they're brand new Fox shocks. It leads to a pain for Alex and I of having multiple rebuilds done on them, multiple people going inside of the shocks, one person actually honing the inside of the shock to get it to stop leaking because there were some imperfections from the factory. Anyways, we're good now, so back to past Jenna.
This is the fuel cell mount. I'm just final clear coating it. Of course, in the wind while a bunch of gnats all land on it and everything, but that's okay. It's a fuel cell mount. So again, it sits underneath the truck and we just want it to be protected more than anything. And here are the guys masked up and spray painting the frame and all the components indoors without the wind or the bug. This is done. <laughs> Alex installed our new chainsaw mount and buggy whip. It really helped tie up the back on personalize it to what Alex really wanted. Squints showing off more TIG welding stance. He's sitting in the side winch tray right now. Good. See, there's yeah, the fuel yeah, cell yeah, yeah. all mounted with the fuel cell mount that I just clear coated. Looking good. <laughs> Stroke face. Oh. It's got the seat belts installed, shoulder straps. Working on the lap belt now. Not the crotch belt. Exciting. Interior's all done. The cutting brake's been installed. We have four USB chargers here, two on each port. Really comfortable seats, safe seat belts, five point all installed, shoulder, harness, lap belt, and crotch. The windows and doors are all windproof, new dash, new vinyl. We're stoked.
These are our Shackle 2.0, our leaf spring hangers, I should say. Leaf spring hangers 2.0. Remember the first ones that were very phallic shaped? Well, these ones aren't as phallic shaped, but the angle's a lot better. I'd like to appreciate Nick's TIG welding on these. He did, I think it's called pulse TIG weld on these, he told me. So there's a very steady, even pattern. I also want to add in and mention that the phallic shaped uh, leaf spring hangers were a problem because the fuel cell actually contacted the rear differential when we had weight or when the suspension cycled without the bumps. And so we had like zero travel in the rear. These leaf spring hangers actually gave us a little bit more travel, like an inch or so, but at least it doesn't contact. Here's everyone working together to get the white whale done. Squints, TIG welding, Brittany grinding away, Alex doing some wiring, Ian working on the links and measurements. It was a real feat towards the end. It wasn't easy, but everyone worked together and really had the same goal in mind. Check it out. Links 2.0, or this might even be the third version. But stay tuned, we'll cut them again. I think the problem was to try to fit around the oil pan and the new exhaust system. I'm sorry, not the oil pan, the oil filter and the exhaust system. It was funny because in the beginning, Ian said, oh, we won't have to worry about the links because there's so much room underneath this floor. Oh, yeah. It's not like a Toyota where everything's all tight, but here we are, we kind of shoved a lot of stuff under that big old floor and it turns out it is kind of tight. <laughs> Done it the same we like time. Squint's attention to safety here. See, he has C clamped his rolling desk chair to the bench while he uses the pedal with his other foot. He's showing C. So you cut that on the film. Before. After. So speaking of winch lines, remember this from week one, I wrapped this blue winch line onto our Sherpa. I just wanted to show you all that the reverse constrictor knot holds up really well with the Gorilla Glue tape. This is after a couple winch jobs and you can see how the knot really tightened down and the tape really became one with the drum. Uh, it was really hard to get off. You can probably guess what these are, the rock sliders. So Ian asked us how we wanted the rock sliders to look and I said as tight as possible to the body. Um, my mistake actually, because they're a little too tight to where you can't even get into the truck. You can't use them as a step. They get a little bit of ice or water on them and you slip right off and hit your kneecap on them just perfectly. So I added stirrups to them. Hindsight is I probably would have made them pop out a little bit further so you can get your foot onto the slider to jump into the big truck. I just wanted to show you guys that the front body mounts have been final welded on. We're working on the sliders, welding those onto the frame right now. Ian's alternating between the passenger and driver's side. So that's how beautiful they look. We have the body lifted up right now so that we can get this welding done. Look at that MIG pattern. 
I think they came out so pretty. And after some clear coat. I do know how it goes. I just want to see this. <laughs> You're really just going to stick through that off. Huh? I don't know. That's just the word that came up with right now. Okay. Dude, I'm pulling an Audrey. This man fucking takes a 45 minute nap, thinks he's Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a word, though? Is that a word? No. Okay, cool. Like, yeah. Pivot. Thank you, Brittany. It just never ends. No, it's the longest drive shaft they've ever made. <laughs> it looks right. Yay! End caps are don't have the seal coming over the edge. They're full. They're full steel. Yeah, that's the seal. No, look right. Look on this one. Yeah, it's rubber. No, it's nice. steel. All the way out. Oh, I've never seen that. Weird. Did you see it? The, the seals it's don't like have like a crest cap. in. It's like the seals on the inside. Mm, it's better. It's not like a normal. That's all steel all the way to the edge. Yeah, that's normal. Squint's completely finished the exhaust system. Here it is all laid out before he installs it under the truck for the last time. There it is, along with the world's longest drive shaft. The drive shaft excitement was short lived. We had to reorder the front drive shaft. So for a while there, we didn't have four wheel drive. We all started to feel it come together at this point. All the final little touches like this going on. Wax seal. Yep. Yep. You can tell we're close to the end when we're doing a bolt check and marking them for um, to make sure they stay torqued. And I chose white because I think it'll show up with mud. It won't show up with snow. It'll be good. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Well, I did, but I don't know. cover bolts? Those are tight. These strings? Uh, Shout out to Brittany and Ian. Thank you so much for sharing your cow with us. Squints installed the stainless steel panels. They came out pretty classy looking. I could be wrong, but I believe this is the silica bronze process that Ian was explaining in an earlier episode where it's less welding, of, it's more so just overlaying on the two materials. Tailgate panel holder things. As you can see here, they use rivets to set the little thin stainless steel hole plate into that frame on the tailgate. It's really special and custom. We really like that part. And here I'm using old engine oil to stain our wood panels. 
Uh, this is out of the white whale, the engine oil, and we've done this before on decking for a trailer. In the winter, it works great up where we live and it's lasted several years and we really like it. So again, that's engine oil, motor oil, dirty motor oil from the white whale. It now lives on the panels that are in the bed. Here's Squint's working on the rail and squinting. That's going to hold the wood in. Also, did you notice that he was using a sawzaw while kneeling on the ground? <laughs> nice, Nick. Got the fuel cell in. Put some gas in her. You got the cherries. Ammo cans. Just in case you didn't notice earlier, these are welded to the tailgate. It's a pretty cool touch. put all of our gear into a pile so that we could check it under load. <laughs> oh, the brake lines. I hate these things. These darn brake lines definitely got the best of us. But after 10 weeks, we wanted to go home and get back to work. Brittany and Ian have new guests at this time that have moved into the bedroom that we were staying in. And it really felt like we have overstayed, you know, and we needed to get on, move on and leave and get back to work and let Brittany and Ian have their house back and be host to new guests. So anyways, I won't give it all away now, but at the end, I'll go over it again, why these brake okay, lines no, got the best it's of us. In progress. It'll never not have tabs again. <laughs> Before you fucking know, the battery is in here. 
Mm. Yeah, BFI, yeah. yeah. I don't think the carburetor cares. No, the carburetor's <laughs> Jenna, yeah. the problem was yeah, that was no squishy. Idea. <laughs> I mean, it shouldn't have been. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you guys caught that, but that was when t- Squints accidentally grounded to the frame with the brake lines instead of to the axle where he was welding on. So the brake lines turned red hot to ash. And that's not even the worst of it when it comes to these brake lines. Am I on your way, Ian? Are you waiting for me? This is just funny because all three of the guys use the front winch tray as a step stool to work on the engine bay. It was very convenient for everybody. Here's Alex. That was Ian. Next is Squints. So at this point, as I mentioned earlier, the guest bedroom in the house is taken by new guests from Brittany and Ian's. And so me and the dogs and Alex are all staying inside the shop, working all night to try to get the truck done. We still have several last minute items to get done. <laughs> blip, blip. Good. Yeah, that was a blip. It, it blip. And then it went back down to zero because it seems like it lit. Blip. Blip. This part was tense to say the least, like super tense. Alex asked for some privacy while he worked through some of the startup sequence. He almost, he touched about almost everything on the truck, every bolt, uh, changed out every fluid. So when it came to starting it up, he was pretty nervous. And when it didn't start up right away, he had a lot of different things to work through to figure out what was going on. In Alex's defense here, he did know that the distributor was possibly off by one tooth. There's so many variables to check out. You had to go through pretty much each one. And thank goodness for Squints here has a little bit of engine experience as well and has some friends in the industry. They were able to bounce ideas off of each other and really work through all of this. And I'm really, really glad that Squints was there. It even got to the point with all that head scratching that Squints called a friend Todd who ended up helping to confirm that it really sounds like the distributor is off by one tooth, like Alex's theory from the very beginning. Yeah, just this part, you know, like if it has a yeah, right. gauge, you know. Yeah. That's all, I do that all the time. And then I'm so my thumb over and you can feel it going out. And then you want to finish it. Okay. I think that's what, I think we're going to do now. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Todd. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And I want to mention that this is the Holly Sniper 2 system, which is brand new to Holly. So there isn't a lot of like forum support or uh, people in the industry that you can just call up and say, hey, when this happens, what does that mean? Because this is a brand new system. We have the Holly Sniper 1 we're familiar with, but the Holly Sniper 2 is a little bit different and there's a little bit new things that they worked through. So here they are adjusting the distributor, turning it, adjusting it by one tooth. Mm, that's it. Okay. That's it. I don't know if they sell or not. No, no, that would that be nice. Yeah. yeah. Probably, it's, it definitely came from where I go. It's a good thing your hair is shaved. <laughs> what Alex is discussing with Squints here is that he was correct. The distributor needs to go one, two in the opposite direction than what they want. Okay. High five. Fist bump. High five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are brothers and you guys don't even know it. <laughs> And here you have it. Behold the White Whale 2.0. Alex and I are now sleeping in the shop. You'll notice as he walks into the shot, he has socks on and his cowboy boots are in the forefront of the shot, foreground. That's because it's probably 2 a.m. in this video. We've been working all night to get the final touches done. Right now he's finishing some wiring, but tomorrow we plan on rolling her out. what she sounds like from inside the cab.
if you know how builds go, you know why I stopped filming right there. One, it was puking power steering. Two, Alex didn't have brakes and he rolled full speed downhill into our heavy duty trailer right here. And it exploded the fuel cell behind the Ford. Um, and so here, Alex is in double, double low, loading onto the trailer, as you can tell by the sunset, about six hours later, six painful hours later, while he tried and tried and tried to get the brakes to seal. They never did. So here she is all loaded up. This was quite the accomplishment. We're ready for our 260 something mile drive home. I sincerely want to thank all of you for following along. I want to thank Brittany and Ian from the Wheel Every Weekend Shop. I want to thank Squints for everything that he did and everyone's lives that were put aside to finish the White Whale 2.0. The next video we post will be a walk around, so check it out. And be sure to check back on our channel where we show the White Whale 2.0 in action on recoveries.